Hi everyone, my name is Beth Brown and I'm counsel in the pensions group at Mayor Brown. Welcome to this episode. In these episodes, we cover different topics each month, providing an overview of the issues faced by pension industry practitioners and offering some practical insight. Time spent listening to these episodes can count towards listers' continuing competence and PMI CPD requirements. All the episodes are available on our Mayor Brown YouTube channel, as well as iTunes, Google Play and Yahoo. You can also subscribe to this channel so that new episodes are shown automatically in your subscriptions feed. In this episode, I will talk about some of the changes introduced by the Corporate Insolvency and Governance Act 2020, which are relevant to the pensions industry. The Corporate Insolvency and Governance Act 2020 received royal assent just last week, on Thursday the 25th of June. The Act passed through Parliament very quickly so that its provisions can be used by companies experiencing financial difficulty as a result of COVID-19. The Act contains a mixture of temporary provisions aimed at assisting companies in navigating through the current crisis, as well as permanent long-term provisions aimed at providing companies with additional insolvency measures and increasing the likelihood of companies being successfully rescued as going concerns. The Act is far-reaching and going forward it is likely to have a significant impact on employers, pension schemes and savers. The temporary provisions are currently intended to apply until 30th of September 2020, although this date could be changed, and include the suspension of the wrongful trading rules where the worsening of the creditor's position is due to COVID-19, the suspension of statutory demands and where a company has suffered financial difficulties due to COVID-19, winding up petitions, and the relaxation of certain corporate governance requirements, such as allowing annual general meetings to be held electronically and extending certain filing deadlines. All of these temporary measures are expected to give directors of a company time and flexibility to respond to the impact of COVID-19 to increase the chances of a company continuing as going concern. In addition, the Act contains several permanent provisions that represent a significant change to UK insolvency law. These include the introduction of a moratorium, the introduction of a restructuring plan based largely on the existing schemes of arrangement, but with the court being able to sanction a proposal without the complete consent of creditors, and a widening of the restrictions on insolvency termination clauses, so suppliers will generally have to continue to comply with their contract with an insolvent employer, provided they continue to be paid. From a pensions perspective, the key provisions of the Act relate to the new moratorium and restructuring plan, so I will talk about each of these in turn. The new moratorium is a period of 20 business days, although this period can be extended, in which a struggling company is granted payment holidays on most forms of debt and is protected from legal action. The moratorium is a freestanding mechanism under which the directors of a company stay in control, although they will be overseen by a qualified insolvency practitioner known as a monitor. During the moratorium period, creditors will not be able to take any enforcement action against a company without the explicit permission of the court. It also stands to reason then that during the moratorium period, the consent of the monitor or court is required before any disposal of assets or granting of security is allowed. It is worth noting that the Act sets out some exclusions from the payment holiday, which includes a contribution to an occupational pension scheme. It is not clear whether this just means the employer contributions to a pension scheme in respect of employees, or whether it includes deficit repair contributions. Hopefully there will be some guidance on this soon. The Act also introduces a new restructuring plan process where, if a company has encountered, or is likely to encounter, 
financial difficulties that are affecting or could affect its ability to carry on business as a going concern, it can agree a compromise with its creditors with the aim of helping it to continue as a going concern. The court can sanction a restructuring plan, provided that the plan would not leave any of the dissenting classes of creditors worse off than if the company had chosen a relevant alternative method. From a pensions perspective, it is worth noting that neither the moratorium nor the restructuring plan will be qualifying insolvency events under the Pensions Act 2004, meaning sponsoring employees of eligible schemes who use these new mechanisms will not trigger a Pension Protection Fund or PPF assessment period. This raised some concerns in the pension industry as it was thought that the moratorium and restructuring plan would detrimentally impact pension schemes. To try to address this, the Act was amended so that both the pensions regulator and the PPF must be notified of a moratorium or restructuring plan. Further, if a company is an employer of an eligible pension scheme and the trustee is a creditor of that company, the PPF will be able to bring a challenge against the moratorium arrangement on behalf of the trustee in accordance with insolvency rules and where a compromise or arrangement is proposed in respect of that company, the Act makes provision for regulations to be passed, which would allow the PPF to exercise the trustee's right as a creditor. Hopefully, we will have some more detail on this soon. The provisions of the Act should help give struggling companies time and space to maximise the chances of the companies being able to continue as a going concern. The Act will be particularly useful for those companies which have experienced or are experiencing cash flow problems as a result of COVID-19. Any significant detrimental impact that the Act could have had on pension schemes and savers has been partially mitigated by the amendments that were made on its journey through Parliament. However, it will be interesting to see if these amendments have gone far enough. In particular, I know that we will all be very keen to see how the new light touch administration powers of the Act are used in reality and whether they will have a detrimental impact on pension scheme trustees. Please feel free to email me with any comments or questions on this episode to bbrown at mayorbrown.com. This episode is an overview of the law in this area and how the law will apply in any particular case will depend on the individual circumstances. Please therefore remember to seek legal advice on your particular circumstances.